welcome dear friends in the series of lectures on refrigeration and air conditioning my plan is to expose you to the concepts of refrigeration and air conditioning courses which would help you practically deal with the systems which you see in the industry a sound understanding of theory would help you in practice so with this belief i plan to engage with you today on a very interesting theme namely vapor compression refrigeration cycle so let me write down this words for you and <clears throat> please clearly understand what is this very interesting thermodynamic cycle and extremely relevant one is what i plan to discuss today vapor compression refrigeration cycle and why is it important to study this that is objectives vapor compression refrigeration cycle is an interesting thermodynamic cycle and it helps you now let me write down the outcomes why do we study this it would help you to analyze the practical machines which machines are we talking about analyzing the practical machines like refrigerators household refrigerators acs the air conditioners the split acs the window acs and even the larger systems like central acs which should be in a position to analyze it okay your cold storages almost all of the commercial applications okay of refrigeration systems you would be in a position to analyze by studying this cycle so very relevant thermodynamic cycle okay and hopefully you would enjoy this right so my plan is the plan is i told you the outcomes the outcomes are that as a student you would be in a better position now to appreciate these systems the refrigerators air conditioning systems cold storage etc not only appreciate them but you would be in a position to analyze them right and uh, some of you would also be in a position to design those right so the plan is to expose you to this thermodynamic cycle and compare this thermodynamic cycle with the other thermodynamic cycle namely the reverse carnot cycle okay you need to compare this cycle with the reverse carnot cycle if time permits obviously so this reversed is very important term because we are familiar with what is a carnot cycle okay a reverse carnot cycle is simply reversing the direction of the processes in the carnot cycle okay and that helps you in appreciating that a engine reversed would in a way theoretically behave as a refrigeration system okay so let me first start with the <clears throat> basic configuration of a refrigeration system okay you all know that a refrigeration system would involve an evaporator evaporator you know is a heat exchanger uh, and it is this place okay which is responsible for getting you the required 
cooling effect or what is known as the refrigeration effect okay so let me draw a neat block for this this evaporator is a place where we are expecting refrigerating effect to happen okay so this is the place which would remove the heat from the space to be cooled okay let me use this for refrigerating effect and denote it by let us say q suffix l okay and obviously the space suppose this is a space from which the heat is removed would be cooled because of the process of evaporation in the evaporator the other important component of mechanical refrigeration systems and in fact it is the important component okay so that is a compressor okay so let me call this as a compressor compressor is known as a vital component the heart of this refrigeration systems and you would understand that the reason is because it is creating the required pressure difference okay for the refrigerating effect to happen in a thermodynamic cycle okay the other important heat exchanger is the condenser so let us say that this is a condenser which i am drawing this is a condenser and the refrigerant after compression enters this condenser okay so what i am going to do is that i am going to move from the practice to the theoretical cycle okay to the theory so we'll first look at the practical systems and then we would talk think about the theoretical cycle which would help you analyze this practical system so that is how i'm going to proceed and then there is something called as an expansion device okay so expansion devices could be some thermostatic valve it could be a capillary tube etc depending upon the application right so this broadly i would say is broadly as a representation of a refrigeration system okay mind well that when i'm saying refrigeration system it also includes the ac system because any air conditioning system involving cooling would have a refrigeration system right generally speaking so this is a thermodynamic cycle being executed okay and the theoretical thermodynamic cycle to help you analyze this so when i'm saying a thermodynamic cycle what i mean to say is that you know that a thermodynamic cycle is a set of processes a thermodynamic cycle is a set of processes which gets you back to the initial state so suppose this is your say one let us say this is your one and this is say two so one to two you know practically speaking is a compression right a compression and ideally speaking what ideally you should expect right so that ideally that compression should be a reversible compression meaning frictionless compression and there should be no heat losses to the surroundings it means that the compressor would not get hot right and there would not be any heat transfer to the surroundings so this is an ideal expectation okay so when i am putting this as an ideal process what is, is expected of the compressor ideally then i would say that that process becomes a reversible adiabatic compression okay and that becomes a theoretical process of a theoretical cycle similarly when you talk about process 2 to 3 ideally there should be no pressure drop in the condenser and hence we say that the ideal process in the condenser is constant pressure heat rejection okay heat rejection 
so what i mean to say is that when i am talking about a thermodynamic cycle okay what i do is that i am abstracting okay i am trying to figure out what is an ideal process for each of the components and then that ideal process i list it in that definite order uh, so that we get what is known as a thermodynamic cycle same is the case of process 3 to 4 which is an expansion but that expansion is a spatial expansion where the enthalpy remains constant okay so it is a throttling process and finally finally after expansion the refrigerant enters enters the evaporator and in the evaporator again you are expecting that the refrigerator ref, uh, the refrigerant sorry the refrigerant would absorb the heat at a constant pressure okay constant pressure heat absorption heat is being supplied to the evaporator now when the heat is being supplied to the evaporator it means that that heat has to be removed from the space to be cooled so you see that in the condenser the heat it is rejected at higher temperature and in the evaporator we we cool the space and hence heat is absorbed by the refrigerant in the evaporator right so this what is happening in the practice okay if you idealize is it in this manner which i have written down and that cycle so it is actual cycle is you have compression you have condensation you have expansion and then there is some evaporation this is the actual cycle but idealizing it how i am expecting the compression to happen how how i am expecting the expansion to happen this if i idealize that gives you what is called as the ideal vapor compression refrigeration system ideal vapor compression and refrigeration system okay or refrigeration cycle thermodynamic cycle is called as the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle so this cycle which you are talking about is a very useful kind of uh, <clears throat> thermodynamic cycle uh, for understanding the practical systems okay so let me help you analyze this what exactly is let me first represent the cycle on a what is known as a pressure and enthalpy diagram okay so allow me to draw a diagram which is pressure enthalpy diagram and mind well that we are talking about two phase fluids okay so obviously i will have to incorporate a vapor dome here to denote or to represent this cycle okay so let us say this is your vapor dome okay so let me get, go back to the previous slide as you see over here if you if you want to divide this cycle okay into two parts so you will have if i'll just divide i'll, I'll draw a line here a dotted line and you can clearly see that above this dotted uh, above this dotted line sorry so uh, you see that this line okay uh, if if it is possible to choose another color let me do it okay so this line uh, let us say from uh, this this line okay uh, let me draw a double line here just to distinguish the line from this so this double line which i am drawing now okay for your understanding say you should not draw the double line when you are actually drawing this block diagram but for your understanding if i draw this double line this double line would then be called as the high pressure line high pressure line okay and the single line this double line is high pressure line and the single line is the low pressure line okay so the single line from the evaporator to the compressor is the low pressure line this 4 to 1 is a low pressure process right and why is that pressure difference happening so the condenser is at high pressure evaporator is at low pressure 
and the condenser is maintained at high pressure the evaporator is maintained at low pressure because of the compressor and the expansion devices so this compressor and expansion devices they perform a very important role to maintain the system under two pressures okay to maintain the system under two pressures look at this so one you'll have one is the high pressure line okay so this is a high pressure line so this high pressure line would always always represent the condenser pressure the condenser pressure and then you would have what is the called as a low pressure line so let us say this is a low pressure line so this low pressure line would represent uh, what is called as a evaporator pressure okay and what the compressor does is it would compress the refrigerant okay so this is a low pressure it will compress the refrigerant from the low pressure that is from the suction pressure up to the discharge pressure and the discharge pressure is the condenser pressure so compressing the refrigerant from the low pressure up to the discharge pressure is the role of the condenser okay so let me call this as state 1 and the state 2 so if you look at this ph diagram what i had drawn is a line which is along a constant entropy process okay so this is a constant entropy process so process 1 to 2 process 1 to 2 is a compression compression meaning the pressure increases from the suction pressure to the discharge pressure suction pressure is the evaporator pressure and discharge pressure is the condenser pressure and that process of compression is not a simple compression it is a adiabatic compression adiabatic compression and not only it is adiabatic but it is also frictionless meaning that it is a reversible process okay and you have studied in thermodynamics that if the process happens to be reversible and adiabatic simultaneously this has to be a constant entropy process or isentropic process so the speciality of this process 1 to 2 is that it is an isentropic compression process okay so isentropic compression is 1 to 2 which you see happening in this uh vapor compression refrigeration cycle and which i have represented on a pressure enthalpy diagram okay now what happens to the refrigerant next so the refrigerant the refrigerant which is at the exit of the compressor would enter the heat exchanger right via the discharge line so look at the diagram here carefully so what you are expecting here is if you look at this diagram this line a uh, compressor uh you have the refrigerant now at a high pressure okay equal to the condenser pressure and this line is the discharge line this is the discharge line okay let me draw the discharge line this is the discharge line and uh, this line which is to the suction to the compressor so suction and discharge this terms we use with reference to the compressor okay so this suction line so what you see is that the refrigerant would first enter the suction discharge line and there is no ideally ideally we expect that there is no pressure drop there is no pressure drop in the discharge line and also in the condenser also in the condenser so this process in that process from 2 so this is also 2 so 2 to 3 okay 2 to 3 is a constant pressure process okay constant pressure process but this constant pressure process would first involve what is called as a sensible cooling followed by condensation okay so there is a cooling first okay there is sensible cooling at constant pressure followed by condensation that is phase transformation okay so the ideal process here you will have suppose i will call this as 2 dash so 2 to 2 dash is a sensible cooling and 2 dash to 3 is condensation but 2 to 3 in total is a constant pressure process and what is happening in during that constant pressure process in this constant pressure process the heat is being rejected okay heat is being rejected to the surroundings so let me write down process 2 to 3 so process 2 to 3 is a constant pressure heat rejection okay what next once it comes out of the condenser right it now goes to the expansion device right and as i said the expansion device is a throttling device okay so if i call this as process 3 to 4 you are having expansion and it is not any expansion it is a throttling expansion meaning that the enthalpy remains constant so it is the isenthalpic ideally we are speaking okay ideally speaking it is an isenthalpic expansion uh, please note that this expansion process is a irreversible process 
so we represent this process by a dotted line on a this is vertical okay so excuse me for not drawing it exactly vertical but you need to assume that this line 3 to 4 is a vertical line right vertical line a dotted line and why is it shown dotted because this is a irreversible process however the enthalpy remains constant enthalpy remains constant okay so this is a representation of expansion process dotted line and finally the final process as i said of vapor compression cycle is 4 to 1 which happens again at 4 to 1 which happens again at constant pressure okay but what happens to the enthalpy the enthalpy would increase why would the enthalpy increase the enthalpy would increase because the heat is being added to the working fluid namely the refrigerant okay so the constant pressure heat addition process okay so this cycle which i drawn now on the pressure enthalpy diagram is called as a vapor compression cycle so what i have done is i have represented a vapor compression refrigeration cycle on a pressure enthalpy plot a pressure enthalpy diagram and you'll come across this pressure enthalpy diagrams for different refrigerants ph charts for different refrigerants a very useful chart uh to analyze the practical systems okay so if i want to analyze this cycle now what i need to do is that i need to apply the steady flow energy equation across each of them okay analyzing means what i need to apply the steady flow energy equation now what do you mean by steady flow energy equation okay we steady flow energy equation is nothing but we are applying we are applying let me write down show the new slide so to analyze the vapor compression refrigeration system i would apply steady flow energy equation for each of the components which of the components means first let us a compressor so compressor as i said that we are assuming it to be a open system and it is an open system but it is a special open system meaning that it behaves as a steady flow system okay so this with this assumption if i make this assumption then i can write down the steady flow energy equation for the compressor as okay because in compressor you know that u1 plus p1 v1 okay into m dot plus half c1 square plus g z1 plus q is equal to m dot m dot u2 plus p2 v2 plus half c2 square plus g z2 plus w okay now double dot now you can neglect this terms in compressor things and you can also neglect this heat transfer because we are in your ideal compressor we assume that it is a adiabatic process so adiabatic practically speaking we need to see that it is properly insulated so this is adiabatic so q is equal to this also cancels out this also cancels out okay so you are left with a very interesting expression m dot into h1 u1 plus p1 v1 h1 is equal to m dot into h2 plus w not or in other words w dot of the compressor is m dot into h1 minus h2 okay or because because this is negative actually this is a negative work what you will be left with is h2 minus h1 okay so this is negative this is negative so this term becomes negative here and hence we can rewrite this as because this is negative so this is m dot h2 minus h1 is w dot okay so this gives us a very handy expression so what it means is that if you apply the steady flow energy equation to compressor okay we get this expression 
it means if you can figure out the enthalpy at inlet and outlet of the compressor you can figure out how much power how much electricity this compressor is going to consume okay so this is what is the strength of the analysis okay similarly similarly when you write it for a condenser the steady flow equation for condenser okay you can figure out how much is the heat rejected by the condenser which would be again m dot into h2 minus h2 minus h3 okay because condenser the work is zero the next important component is expansion wall expansion device where it is process 3 to 4 and because it is an isenthalpic expansion what you'll get is h3 is equal to h4 okay and finally the evaporator which is going to be a very important component for calculating the refrigerating effect the refrigerating effect r e or the terminology which i am using is ql will be equal to m dot into h1 minus h4 okay this you can convince yourselves how you get this expressions you can convince yourselves by writing the steady flow equation for all the four components right namely the compressor condenser expansion devices and evaporator and reducing this to the expressions which i have written on this board okay so finally if you want to work out the performance of this performance is the coefficient of performance which is nothing but the refrigerating effect upon the compressor work so it would be ql upon w and this would be m dot into h1 minus h4 and uh, q is m dot into h2 minus h1 okay so this turns out to be a very simple expression in terms of enthalpy okay so this is the theoretical cop expression for vapor compression refrigeration cycle i hope that this point is clear to you okay a quick recap of what we have done what we have done in this lecture is uh, first thing is we talked about a practical application of refrigeration and air conditioning if you see this first slide and i said that uh vapor compression refrigeration cycle is a very useful analysis tool a thermodynamic cycle for analyzing this practical applications namely refrigerators air conditioning systems and so on okay uh, i talked about a thermodynamic cycle which is vapor compression refrigeration cycle okay and that cycle for understanding that cycle i had drawn a block diagram of refrigeration system having the four components evaporator compressor condenser and an expansion device okay uh, i talked about the ideal processes which are possible in each of them okay and uh, that we listed as reversible adiabatic compression in the compressor ideally constant pressure heat rejection in the condenser isenthalpic expansion in the expansion device and constant pressure heat supplied in the evaporator okay after writing all these four processes i said that that is called as in this order if you write it is called as vapor compression cycle uh, which i then represented it on a pressure enthalpy diagram okay and finally i analyzed this cycle by using the steady flow equation wherein we got very beautiful expressions a small succinct expressions which ultimately i used to calculate the coefficient of performance okay so i hope this is clear to you okay and uh, we will continue with this in the next class thank you very much